Hey guys, my Toy Bonsai Boise. So today I'm gonna to be working on my dwarf pomegranate bonsai tree. I'm gonna be taking it out of this pot here, putting it into this pot here. So I'm gonna be doing a repotting. I'm gonna prune some of the roots, depending on how it looks. And I'm definitely gonna be pruning this down because as you can see, it's, it's uh, I've just let it grow wild all winter. Um, so it needs a trim. So we're gonna do some structural pruning, kind of figure out a, a direction for it to go. And then also I'm gonna be talking a little bit about this guy here, which is a cutting that I took from, hopefully you can see that, this branch over here. And uh, I'm gonna be repotting this into some new soil, not putting it in a bonsai pot yet, just another pot, but I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, how that went, um, just so maybe it'll help you with doing some cuttings if you've got one of these. And uh, overall, just talk about how I deal with cuttings uh, at this stage, once they've taken root, kind of how I transfer them into new soil and, and, uh, and show you the process. So. Follow me, let's jump in and get started. All right, I'm back. So here's my dwarf pomegranate bonsai tree. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about this and about dwarf pomegranates in general. So I got this for, I think it was $8 about two or three years ago at a nursery here in town. And the only reason I got it so cheap um, is that he didn't know what it was. I didn't know what it was either. He thought it was a sarissa, which it does kind of resemble a sarissa, um, but I didn't know what it was either. And I was just looking for something to play with. And so I got it. So that's how I acquired this one. Um, but one thing I do like is that it has really nice taper starting at the bottom, tapering real nice up to about there. I don't like this little bulge at the very bottom at the base here. So we're gonna see how it looks under that and see if there's something we can do about it. Um, a little something about dwarf pomegranates in general is that they are considered a tropical tree. Um, they're from the Mediterranean originally, from what I understand, but they're considered a tropical tree. So that means they're hardy in zones eight and above, give or take a little bit. Um, basically, if the temperature dips below 40 degrees, it's too cold for these. And I personally wouldn't even chance it at 50 <laughs> because in my experience sometimes if they're a little sensitive you know 50 or even 60 could shock it and it could actually kill the tree in other weird experiences i've had where it can handle 40 just fine and doesn't skip a beat but as a general rule uh if it gets to about 40 degrees um, then this tree needs to stay inside I kept it inside all winter long. I had it outside last summer, um, but I, I had it inside all winter long because I'm here in Boise, zone six. So that's a little something about it. A couple other characteristics and features about these is that they, later in the summer, <laughs> later in the summer, they develop these really cool, bright red flowers. Um, I wish I had, if I can find a picture, then I will post it right here, but I don't know if I have one or not, so we'll see. Um, after it flowers, they will actually develop fruit as well, like small, just miniaturized pomegranate fruit. Mine has not yet. Um, I don't know how old it is since I got it at a nursery and they didn't know even what it was. So I don't know how old mine is, but I understand they have to be at least three to four years old before they will develop fruit. And even then it's under the right conditions. So, um, you know. If you're trimming it all the time and pruning the roots and stuff that tends to hurt its chances of producing fruit so um so just take that into consideration if you have one and you're trying to get it to fruit and it won't just maybe reduce how often you prune it um i know not to go off on a tangent with that but i know a lot of people will keep their bonsais trimmed up pretty neat all the time so they see it start getting a little too out of whack. Like they would never let this happen here. They would keep it in shape roughly most of the time. Other people are the opposite and they'll just let it grow wild and then prune it way back and let it grow wild again, prune it way back. And then that's it for the year. Um, I've tried both, but I'm starting to lean toward the philosophy of letting it grow wild, pruning it way back twice a year with some minor, I will kind of nip at it here and there, just a little, if I see it going in a direction that I know I don't want it to go. So in other words, if I see some big branch right here just going off, I might nip that in the bud and, and take it off. But otherwise, I'm not worried about keeping it neat and trim all year. And the reason why is because it does weaken the tree a little bit, a little bit, a little bit each time. 
So rather than letting it grow strong and then taking a big whack at it and then letting it recover and taking a big whack, you're just constantly nicking at it. And so over the course of a few years, it gets weaker and weaker and can eventually severely hurt the health of the tree and even kill the tree. So um, once I heard that style, I sort of started gravitating toward it. So take it with a grain of salt, but that's just what I know about these. Back to this dwarf pomegranate, since I went off on a tangent anyways. One thing you're gonna see here, and I'll tell you what, let me, let me zoom in so you can get a better look and then I'll talk about why it looks a little crazy and weird here. So let me zoom in here. Okay, so that's a little bit better look. So what you'll notice here is all of the branches are sort of growing in this direction. And the reason is I had it against a window, the window being right here. So it naturally wants to grow toward the sun. And one thing about these dwarf pomegranates is that the, the newer, younger branches, as you'll see, are, are very weak and, and flimsy. Maybe not flimsy, but flexible is a word I'll, I'll use. So they're very flexible, as you can see. I mean, they're almost transparent. If you, if you look at the outside of the, of the branch stem here, you can see it's, it's almost transparent. Like you can see right through it. That's how, that's how flexible and uh, sort of weak they are. So what I'm getting at is that that's the reason why they so easily bend and grow toward the sunlight. So shame on me for leaving it in that direction so long, but at the same time, it's an easy fix because you can either A, we're gonna be trimming it anyway, so we'll fix this, or B, you just move it in this direction. So now all of a sudden it wants to grow this way and it'll sort of straighten them out. And also it can develop some character in the movement of the branches when you do that, because after they've been growing this way for a while, it will eventually start to harden off, like down here. So then when you change direction, then it wants to grow back this way, it can start to, you know, like I said, just create some movement and everything's fixable. So a couple other things I'm going to point out. If I can get this out of the way for you. You'll notice that the branch or the trunk is very straight right up the center. And then it starts to curve out up top here on, and off to the right. And so I think what I'm going to do when I repot this is I'm going to repot it to kind of make this a lean again, like as is now, I almost always plant these at a lean like this just to create some movement and character. I'm going to continue on, except I'm going to move the direction of the lean more like this and see how that looks. You know, I may do it and it, I just may hate it, but I'm thinking if I move it more like this, so that it's kind of like that per se, almost even like this. So it's not quite at such a drastic angle of the lean. If I do it like this, that will help straighten some of these branches out a little bit better and it'll just, you know, work toward that uh, goal of creating movement without it being super drastic. I don't want big 90 degree turns. I just want some gradual, subtle and you know, cool looking curves. So that's sort of the, the plan there. That being said, let's go ahead and trim up some of these branches. And we know since we're going to lean it up kind of at an angle like this, keeping that in mind, we know that this is just going to be in the way here. So I'm going to take this way back like that. And again, looking at it from this angle, I'm going to take this back to here. This bottom branch down here, I've got three branches here. Let me trim up some of the bottom foliage so you can get a look. So I've got three branches, one, two, and three. They're not all three coming out of the exact same spot, but it's pretty close. And this branch is already significantly thicker than these others. So what we don't want is to encourage it to continue growing disproportionately bigger than the other ones. So we're going to have to take some of this foliage back. And then the question is, which of the branches do we keep? Which do we get rid of? I know I want to keep this be just because of the angle it comes out and it'll start to grow up this way. So we know we want that. This grows up pretty, pretty close to being straight up. Same with the back one. Hmm. I'm thinking that, uh, 
what I'll do for now, I'm going to take this one back to here because whether we keep this branch or not, we're going to have to prune it back either way. So we'll take it back to get a better look. And uh, mm. tough decision. I can't decide which one to keep. I can't decide whether to keep this one or this one back here. I'll come back to this in a moment. If I can't decide, I'm not going to rush it. So being at this angle here, we'll take this one back to... Let's see, we'll take this one back to there. Mm, let's see, again, going with this as the angle it's going to go with. Take this one back to here. Take this one back to there. I think it's definitely not growing in any of the directions I would prefer. <laughs> uh, you know, they never do. I guess one thing I'll, I'm going to point out here is since we're going to be repotting it at an angle like this, this will no longer be the leader. I think what we're going to do is we're going to follow, hopefully you can see that all right, the trunk line going up and then going this way. And I think the new leader will be over here. Could go either way. I'm not real sure yet which one I want to go, but I think that's what I'm going to do. So that being said, I'm going to take this back drastically here to there. And let's see. Take this one back to, I don't want to take too much oomph out of it. I want to be a little generous with how much I leave at this point. And this one back here, I'm starting to lean toward keeping this and getting rid of this one because it's just, it's too far in the back. It's too straight up, but I will, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm going to take it back pretty, pretty low and we'll keep it as an insurance branch just so that, you know, in the odd event that this one would die, it doesn't look like it will, but if it did, we've got this one. I'll keep an eye on it over the next couple of weeks and, you know, maybe do some corrective action if I have to after that. Now, I'm gonna spin it around here. Actually, I'll just do this because This being the leader, so I'm going to take, I'm going to take this one back to there. And take this one back a little further here to there. And then I'm going to take this big guy back as well. I'm just trying to figure out how far back to take this one. Take it to about here. Now I might just be on the safe side and keep it again for insurance. You know, bonsai is a process. So that being said, you don't have to do everything all at once. You don't have to get really drastic, you know, at one time when you're doing it, you can sort of, you know, do as much as you feel comfortable with and then save some of the little or corrective actions for a little later. I know that flies a little bit in the face of what I was saying with uh, not pruning it all the time, but uh, I'm still not, I'm not saying always be doing corrective action. I'm saying if you've got a lot of big, bold cuts to make, you can spread that out a little bit, especially when you're doing some of this stuff, some of the restyling and whatnot. So hopefully that makes sense and it doesn't sound contradictory because I, I do understand how it can sound a little contradictory. When I say doing constant cuts all the time, weakening the tree, what I'm really referring to is as a practice. So when you've already got the structure and the idea of what you want and you're still just keeping it trimmed and to try and keep it in perfect condition all the time, that's what you want to avoid. Okay. So it's a scraggly looking little adolescent kind of a tree, but, um, but we've got it down to roughly the shape and direction that we're going to want it to go. I'm going to take this one back a little further now that I'm looking at it. I 
Okay, so that'll work for now. Now, if I see any branches that are crossing or three, four branches coming out of one spot that maybe I missed earlier, I will fix it. But for now, I think that's okay. Let me give you a spin of how it looks here. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and get the pot that we're repotting it into. We'll get it prepared and then we'll move it from this pot that it's been in for a little while into its new bonsai pot. So let's do it. Okay, cool. So I've got my bonsai soil here that I'm gonna use and I got my bonsai pot. Just a quick uh, reminder here on how I do it. I just take a little netting or a screen or whatever you've got, place it over the drainage hole and you do that for two reasons. Number one, you don't want all of your soil just running out of the <laughs> out of the bottom of the pot. And two, it in theory prevents um, any kind of clogged drainage issues. So I put the netting down. Now, two things you can do: you can put some uh, pea gravel or just some small rocks on the bottom there to kind of hold it in place, and also it further prevents any kind of um, clogging. Um, but if your soil is chunky enough, like I think this is, then you don't necessarily have to use small rocks at the bottom. So I'm going to not use rocks this time. And I'm just going to put a small layer here at the bottom, like so. And that will A, hold the netting slash screen in place. And B, gives me a foundation here where I can put the tree once I take it out of its other pot. That way I'm not taking it out and then fumbling with this while I'm right in the middle of that and you know roots are drying out and everything else. So now that I've got this prepared, I'm gonna move these out of the way and we'll take the tree out of its other pot. Okay, so here we go. I've got the tree, so I'm just gonna take, you can use anything. I've, I've been using the same old butter knife for years, so I could probably invest in a newer and you know, a better tool, but now it's kind of like my little lucky so I'm just going to stick with it for now and I'm just going to scrape along the outside edge which will help loosen it up while inside the pot because what you don't want to do is just grab it and yank it out of there and rip roots apart and everything else so we're just going to loosen it up this is a hard clay pot if it was not if it was a softer plastic training pot then oftentimes you can just sort of squeeze along the edges maybe bat it a couple times and that helps too but that won't work in this particular case now i don't know what to expect so just a little backstory on how it got to where it is now i did have it in a plastic training pot up until about i want to say about november of last year november 2019 and I wanted to get it in a little better looking pot because it was coming inside and I thought, you know, I'll just slip pot it. So that's what I did. Um, and that was when I trimmed off this branch. I think it was this branch here and got the cutting. But, um, but anyways, I was short a couple ingredients on soil. So I sort of skimped a little bit. So I don't know how it's going to look. Let's see how it feels. Let's start with that. It feels pretty loose, which is not a great sign. Trying to do this carefully here. Okay, so it, it was kind of what I was afraid of, which is that it never really penetrated that soil very well. Um, not the end of the world, it just means that it didn't grow as vigorously and healthy, healthy as, as it could have had I used better soil or, you know, I think I was sort of just doing everything at the time and I skimped on what used what I had should use better soil but anyway so now we've got it out we're just going to rake off some of this old soil I really don't want to trim hardly any roots at all now that I can see it doesn't have that many roots to trim anytime you trim roots while it is necessary um, to do it nonetheless always takes some oomph out of its growth and, you know, I won't say it always hurts the health of a tree, but it certainly doesn't always help. And there's exceptions to every rule. So as always, take everything I say with a grain of salt. So there we go. So that's a good idea. Now I could get real nitpicky. I will show you this here. It looks like this root is dead. Now I take it back. It's got one live little root here at the bottom. 
but I don't think it's worth keeping just for that one live little root. So I'm actually gonna get rid of this long root here because it's just gonna get in the way. That one little live root does not justify its existence there. So we're gonna get rid of that. Got another one over here that I can see. I'm just looking for any dead roots. There we go. Can't quite tell on this area. It had a little aerial root. Can't tell past that. It does have some life. We'll leave that for now. So that that's a strange little feature that it's got here. This little bulb at the very bottom. It's got some crossing roots here. So I'm not happy with its its um, the way the roots are right now. Not happy with it. And I'm not happy about the fact that I can't get too crazy with it either because of the fact that it is the middle of summer. Um, so I'm just gonna have to make do with what I got. And that's okay. This poor tree has been through heck, man. I put it in less than high quality soil last winter just to kind of get it by. It suffered. Now I'm repotting it in the middle of winter. It's gonna suffer again. <laughs> this tree's got, gonna hate me by the time we're said and done. Okay, so there we go. So now what I am going to do is grab its pot that is going into and let's put it in its new soil. Okay, so here we go. So we got the new pot here. And as we were st stating before, it was at a lean kind of like this. It was a pretty extreme lean like that. I don't know if I want to go that extreme. I'm going to stand it up a little bit more and actually go a little more to this side, which is going to be challenging based on where these roots are. Would have been better if they were on this side. It would have helped with this lean, but you know, it is what it is. So I'm gonna work with what I got. Let's see. Something kind of like, that might be too much at that angle. I could do a more of an upright position. I could do a formal upright, which is basically just straight up like this, or kind of a semi-formal upright now starting to lead toward a semi-formal upright which is still a little bit of a lean to it but not nearly as drastic as it was and actually that's a perfect height where the soil will be because it'll settle in there a little bit so yeah i think i'm gonna go i think i'm gonna go with this right here for its direction so i'm gonna show you here hopefully i can keep it in this one place while i'm spinning for you okay yeah, so we're going to go with that. So what I'm going to do now, now that I've got the angle and whatnot that I'm going to go, this, grab my soil. Actually, I'm going to spin it around and I'm first going to add some soil in the very bottom middle there to fill in this cavity. And I'm going to go a little bit at a time just to make sure I fill in all the gaps. Sometimes I get a little hog wild and I'll just pour all the soil in and then I'll sit here with a chopstick or something and just tap at it for what feels like hours. Probably more like 20 minutes, but it feels like hours when you're doing it because it's so tedious. But with this one, I'm gonna go a little bit at a time because we wanna make sure that all those cavities are filled in. We wanna make sure that all those roots are protected with soil. We don't want any air gaps in there. When you have air gaps, roots tend to dry out. Um, also, other things can happen inside of air gaps. Um, you know, insects can get in there and lay eggs, or mold can grow, all kinds of bacteria. You know, just bad bad things tend to happen when you have air gaps in there. I've experienced quite a few of them. So I'm now a firm believer in taking the extra time to fill in the air gaps. That is not dirty at all. Sorry, I got to get right in the way of the camera here to do this, but at this stage, I'm just being a little careful so it doesn't fall. I'm going to start filling it in. Speaking of that, I will uh, I'll point something out here. Um, most videos that you watch, people repotting bonsai trees, they wire the tree in, which is not a bad idea at all. I should probably do it more often than I do but I can also sort of get away with not doing it because I don't have cats or little kids or anything that, you know, run around and knock it over. 
It's not at a spot where it is exposed to high wind. So I don't have that working against me either. So if I was battling one of those issues, then yeah, I would probably be more apt to wire these in more often, but, but I'm not, it's pretty protected where it's at. So I can sort of get away with it. I do still place rocks on the um, top after I repot a tree because it helps keep it in place in a more natural way, I think. That's the other reason I don't like wire men, uh, wiring them in is that, you know, sometimes you can damage the roots when you're doing it because they're already in kind of a vulnerable state because they're ex being exposed and they're, you know, they don't like that and you're cutting them and you're getting to more sensitive spots. So it, it just depends. You gotta, uh, as always, take it all with a grain of salt because uh, there's other people that'll swear up and down how wrong I am and how all my trees are going to die. <laughs> You'll always have those people too. But you can get away with it. I get away with it all the time. Okay, so that's fairly sturdy now. It's not as sturdy as I would like, so I'm just going to work it in the back a little more. Sometimes I'll just sort of put my finger on just sort of shake it like this, and you can almost feel it work its way down. I'm not going to go too crazy on it because I don't, again, don't want to compact it. So that's enough on that. So there we go. Now I am going to add just a little more soil around some of these edges here. I want to make sure it's the right, the right height. Kind of like that. And we're going to go give it a rinse. And after we give it a rinse, some of this soil will settle in and it will actually take care of a lot of those remaining air pockets, if there are any, for us. And we can sort of see where it's at level wise with the soil and we can see if we need to do any more work. So let's go give it a rinse. All right, so here it is. Now that we've got it rinsed off and give it a good soak, let me give you a spin here. Not bad, not bad. It's a work in progress. It's still young and it's got a long way to go. Um, we didn't trim much at all, so I don't think we have a ton to worry about. I am just now, <laughs> never fails though. The, I swear the second I say that, I always see something. And I see one branch right here that is growing inward. I'm just gonna get rid of that right now. There, that's it, I swear. Never fails, the second I say, ah, oh, I don't have to do anything else, boom, I see it. But anyways, that, that's that's it in a nutshell. So I'm, I'm, I like it, honestly, I, I think it turned out well, I mean, Oftentimes when you repot it into a bonsai pot the first time, you know, when you're just transitioning it into a bonsai pot, oftentimes it doesn't look that good yet. You know, it takes a while before it starts to look okay. It looks kind of like a little stub or whatever. But this I'm actually halfway happy with. So, um, so no complaints right now. We'll see how it goes. Um, I don't expect it to fruit anytime soon. I hope that it flowers this year, but 
wouldn't surprise me if it didn't because you know anytime you do something like this it sort of scares it out of doing that but um, I hope you enjoyed it uh, if so please subscribe to the channel and, and like leave me any comments that you have on dwarf um, pomegranates or um, or questions that you have whatever you know I love conversing on it so I learn a lot from comments and just talking with people online and I, I hope you can learn something too even if it's by seeing me do something wrong maybe you know you can go hey that's wrong um but hopefully hopefully not hopefully you learned something from me doing something right but uh, i appreciate everyone who does like and subscribe so thank you for that if you want to stay tuned for a couple extra minutes i'm just going to do a quick look at the cutting that i took from this last fall slash winter and i'm going to show you it's really easy but i'm just going to show you how i take it out of that rooting soil that i use and into some better you know semi bonsai soil um, and I'll, I'll talk about some of the ways that I've done it wrong and where it bit me and ways that I've done it right. So um, if, uh, if you're interested in, in that, follow me and let's dig into that. All right. Well, thanks for sticking along just to see how I, I deal with uh, cuttings. So a couple things I'll point out. This was a cutting that I took off of that tree that I just worked on. I want to say it was around November-ish, give or take. And it's really the worst time to try that, but I did it anyways. I just had to trim it down because I was moving it inside and so it sort of had to be done but the branch I just liked it it, it looked semi hard wood so I thought eh, I'll try so I did it I put it in a bottle of water just a regular old bottle of water filled it up put the branch in it and just leave, left it alone oftentimes what I've done I'll wrap a piece of paper around the water bottle and just tape it which sort of protects the roots the newly formed roots uh, from being exposed to any sunlight so that was a big change that I made that, that resulted in much higher success with cutting. So for what it's worth, you can even just use a cup that's not a glass or not a plastic water bottle like I was using. Just something that protects the roots from light. So that's one thing I did. Oddly enough, at one point or another, it got bumped and this, it was only about this tall at the time, it fell into the bottle of water. So the whole thing was submerged for at least a couple of months. Um, and it still survived. I didn't know if it was going to or not. The first thing that I noticed, um, is that it doesn't just form like a white root coming out, like say a ficus would. What this has is sort of a gob of, it just looks like goo. It's just like a, a glob of goo that sort of surrounds the bottom of the cutting. And that ends up forming the roots. So when you see that, that's a good sign. Um, so that's what I did from there after a while. I transitioned it from that water bottle into a pot with some um, heavy organic soil with a lot of peat moss in it. Peat moss is great for cuttings. Um, and then on top of that, to ensure that it continued success, because it started to have a couple little leaves at that point, I took that same water bottle, or maybe a little different one at this point, back to probably a little different one, and cut it, put it over top, poke some holes in the top so it could still ventilate air. And that worked as sort of a semi greenhouse. It's just sort of a cheapo way of, of duplicating the effects that a greenhouse would have, but it worked and it worked real well. Once it got to about, I'd say this tall or so, I took that off once I felt comfortable with it. And it sort of got a little wilty for about a week. And I thought, oh man, all of these months and now I just messed it up, but it bounced back. From there, I just keep the soil moist, um, keep it out of direct sunlight for as long as I could. When it really started to take off, I started to transition it into full, fuller sunlight a little bit at a time. So I guess the gist of what I'm saying is you, you just want to avoid shocking the, it at any stage. You want to just transition it into the next stage. So that's how I've had the highest success with cuttings and hopefully that'll help you if you are taking cuttings too. Moving on, moving from this pot into this pot. If you're wondering why, because they're about the same size, they don't look much different. This one might actually even look a little more cheapo than this. The reason is just mostly the soil. This has the cutting soil. This has some nicer bonsai soil. It's going to um, help with the root development and um, it's just gonna help the overall health of the tree. So I'm gonna move it from here to there. And when I do that, I'm not going to bare root it unless it just falls off. Sometimes this stuff will fall off just in clumps because it was really heavy on peat moss. So don't freak out if that happens. Just get it in there as soon as possible and keep it very moist. 
Um, but if it doesn't do that on its own, I am not going to proactively bear root it. That's another way to shock it. I've had a uh, low success rate bear rooting cuttings in the first year or even two years. So try to keep the root ball around it if you can, but get rid of all the excess stuff around that. Move it from that little root ball into the new soil, surround it with other new soil, keep it very moist, keep it in shade for a week or two, transition it into full sunlight, and it should live. So that being said, let's go ahead and do it. I'm gonna move this out of the way. All I'm gonna do here, same thing I did on the last one, I'm gonna take my trusty little old butter knife that I've been using for years and cut around it. What we don't want to do is cut roots because even though this is going on, you know, six, seven, eight months, something like that, it's still very small, very young, very delicate. So we don't want to shock it. We don't want to cut any roots at all. I've seen videos where people do root pruning at an early stage. I would really advise against it. While yeah, you can do it and get away with it. And yeah, it needs to be done on a bonsai tree eventually. I would wait as long as you can. You're not really hurting anything by waiting. Okay, so there we go. So this, actually, I am pleasantly surprised. Let me show you here. This has a ton of roots. Look at that. Good, healthy white roots as well. So that's a great sign. I'm really happy to see that. That's what you want to see. So I'm going to scrape just a little bit of the soil off of here. Just the excess old stuff that was on there. It looks like I did have some bonsai soil underneath this rooting soil, so that's good. Okay, and that's all I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do much else. I'm gonna move this out of the way here. And grab its pot that we're putting it in. Just like so. Sometimes if I'm thinking, I'll even sort of spray it down or get it moist there before I put it in. But I wasn't thinking, so I didn't. So now that it's in there, I'm gonna break it up just a little more if I can, whatever I can get away with here. It's got a lot of good healthy roots, so I'm not very nervous this time around about it. Do it sort of like this angle here. Seeing how much of that quote unquote stem <laughs> Uh, uh, trunk is actually buried, so however much I can reveal, the better. But it is a cutting, so it can only go so deep. I did have some of it buried, about an inch or so, give or take. Alright, I'm starting to get a little more roots here exposed, so I don't want to go too much deeper than that. Alright, that's good. So, now I left a lot of that soil that I just scraped off in there. Not really gonna hurt anything. There was nothing wrong with the soil. It was just time to get it into some newer soil. So, one moment. Okay, so now that we got it in there like that, got it at the angle we want, got some nice good movement this way, so now it'll grow up like that. Just gonna surround it with some new soil. Don't wanna bury all that trunk that I just exposed. Now you will see some of the, see these roots here exposed. It's unfortunate, but it is okay because in this particular case, we had enough good, healthy roots at the very bottom to support it. So some of these top ones dying off is not the end of the world. I guess if you if you take away anything from this at all, it would just be I, at least my hope would be that you just want to play it by ear, you know, especially if it's one that you kind of really want to see make it and it's not just another random cutting just play it by ear just kind of look at it and use common sense and good judgment and go you know i don't want to get too crazy with this it doesn't look super healthy it doesn't have very many roots if it doesn't have roots do everything you can to protect them that's what it's all about on cuttings making them getting them to survive just making sure that it's nice and uh filled did sort of mess up the angle a little bit when I did that. I'm actually going to cut 
some of these very top roots here. Even though I said I wasn't going to cut any roots, I am in this case. Just these ones that are showing. There we go. I mean, they'll just they'll basically air prune themselves anyways. Just meaning, you know, being exposed to air like this. They'll just dry up and fall off on their own, but I'm going to be proactive and just trim those top ones. Now I know it's leaning way over and you're thinking, Hey, why in the world would you do that? Are you going to trim this? I'm not going to trim it. I'm just going to let it go. And that's okay because as stated earlier, it's going to grow toward the sun. So it's going to end up growing back up like this and it'll give it some nice trunk movement. So the older it gets, uh, the more character and movement it will have. So that's basically it in a nutshell. So all I'm going to do now, I won't bore you with all the final details, but I'm just going to go give this a good thorough rinse and uh, make sure that it stays moist. And I'm going to see to it that it stays in the shade for the next week or two and just see how it does. If I start seeing signs of trouble, then I will move it into even more shade, maybe even move it back inside if I have to. But that's it in a nutshell. So I hope this worked uh, in some way or works for you and I hope you find some success doing cuttings that you're working on. So thanks for watching everybody. Have a good rest of your day.